31. The driver can't find the restaurant. He rolls down the divider, peering at us in the rearview mirror. The American Grill? The American Grill Bistro, Garrett says. And you're sure this is the mall? Positive. Garrett extracts his arm from behind my back, leaning forward in his seat. North Point Mall, the American Grill Bistro. We circle for a few minutes until the driver gives up and lets us off at Macy's. Walking through the mall in formal wear is surreal. There are old ladies smiling at us and little kids staring. And one dude even snaps a picture. Creeper, says Morgan. Garrett takes the lead, guiding us past Forever 21, the Apple Store, and Francesca's. But we get all the way to Sears, and there aren't any restaurants. Garrett looks perplexed. It was definitely down this way. Definitely. Should I check the map? Anna asks. It should be right here. We all stand there for a minute in our dresses and tuxes. It's a little disorienting. Like, I'm a suburban girl. I know malls. But this isn't my usual mall, which means it's like stepping into a parallel universe. I watch Simon chew on his lip while Garrett stares at the directory. Maybe we should eat at the food court? Anna suggests. No, wait, Abby says, hand flying to her mouth. Are you okay? She nods slowly. Let me just... I'll be right back, she says, furrowing her brow. And then a moment later, she disappears around a corner. Garrett drifts back toward me, looking distraught. I swear I made a reservation. I talked to someone. On the phone, he adds. Garrett, it's fine. I did, though. I promise. I believe you, I say, scanning the floor for Abby. There's a Starbucks and a set of escalators and dozens and dozens of people, but she's nowhere. I want a massage chair, says Simon, staring into Brookstone. I'll be your massage chair, says Bram. You did not just say that. I scrunch my nose at him. But he just squeezes Simon's shoulders and then tugs him closer. Simon smiles and leans back. Hey, Abby says breathlessly. I look up with a start, and she's a sunbeam. She has her smile cranked up to a million, and her eyes are bright and crinkly. So, Garrett, she says. Suso? She takes both his hands. We have a reservation. We do? He looks hopeful. Where did the restaurant go? It's not a restaurant, Abby says. I look at her. What? I mean, it's sort of a restaurant. She looks like she's ready to burst. But it's in there. She points to a spot behind her shoulder. That's the American Girl Store, says Simon. Yes. As in dolls. Yes. Abby's eyes are twinkling. I don't get it. Simon looks baffled. Well, she says, it appears that Garrett made our prom dinner reservations at the American Girl Bistro. Garrett shakes his head. No, it's the American Grill Bistro. Okay, Abby cocks her head. But the American Girl Bistro has a reservation on file for a party of eight, and it's under your name, so. Oh. Garrett's eyes go wide. Fuck. Simon face plants into my shoulder, almost sobbing with laughter. This whole place is pink. Blindingly bright pink. Everything. The walls, the tables, the fake flower centerpieces. I love it here, breathes Abby. I grin at her. You would. There's an old-timey soda fountain up against one wall, underneath a twinkly lit ceiling, and light fixtures shaped like giant pink flowers. And everywhere I look, I see American Girl dolls. I think we're the only people here who didn't bring our sidekicks. It's the cutest thing in the world, though. The dolls sit in booster seats, clamped onto the tables, and the waiters bring them tiny cups of doll tea. I remember when this store opened, Morgan says. I was obsessed with American girls. Anna raises her eyebrows. You're still obsessed. Not with all of them, Morgan swipes her. Just Rebecca. But like, she's Jewish, so she's family. I think you can rent dolls, Bram points out, for the meal. I'm renting a doll, says Simon. Guys, I'm so fucking sorry. Garrett covers his face. Abby grins. Are you kidding me? This is the greatest prom dinner ever. 
Agreed, Morgan says. She clasps her hands together. The hostess seats us at a long table in front of the soda fountain counter, with pink polka dot chairs and intricately folded white cloth napkins. The first thing Simon does is ask her about the rental dolls. And then he, Abby, and Bram end up following her back to the hostess stand. The boys return moments later with pink booster seats and a pair of blonde dolls who look disturbingly like Taylor Metternich. Abby's still deciding, Simon explains. I glance back at the hostess stand, and Abby actually winks at me. When she finally comes back, she's hugging a black doll with pigtails. I'm naming her Hermione, she announces. Simon gasps. It's finally happening. Abby's becoming a Potterhead. Something like that. She looks straight at me. I end up seated between doll Hermione and Garrett, across from Simon and Bram, while Nick stares dazedly at the menu, looking tense and miserable. My eyes drift back to Abby, who tucks her chin in her hand and smiles. Let's talk about how Simon's new school mascot is a squirrel. A black squirrel? Still a squirrel. I love squirrels, Simon grins. Oh, and guess what? Amtrak has a student discount. That'll come in handy, Abby says. I think we're going to shoot for visiting every other weekend, Bram says. And we're going to Skype, adds Simon. And we're bringing back the Jacques and Blue emails. Aw, I love it. That's a great plan. Yeah, we've got this. Long distance can totally work. Simon catches himself, glancing back and forth between Abby and Nick. It can totally work for some people, he adds awkwardly. I heard it was a deal breaker, Nick says loudly, and everyone falls silent. It's the first time he's spoken all night. I glance back at Abby, who's smiling brightly but blinking fast. Nick shrugs. But maybe that's just a thing people say when they're dumping you right before prom. Abby pushes her chair out and stands. Excuse me. Simon sighs. Nick. The boys all shift in their seats, and Morgan and Anna exchange wide-eyed glances. A millennium passes, and no one says a word. Finally, I stand and grip the back of my chair. I'll talk to her. Then I take a deep breath and follow her into the bathroom. Abby's sitting on the ledge by the sinks, toes turned out like a ballerina, jelly flats peeking out from under her dress. She looks up at me, startled. What are you doing here? Looking for you? I rub the back of my neck, just making sure you're okay. She shrugs. I'm fine. Okay. For a moment, neither of us speak. Why are you in the bathroom? I ask finally. Did you know they have doll holders in the stalls? She asks. I blink. What? Like, there's a little hook in there where you can set your doll. I'm serious, go look. But why? So the doll can experience this bathroom with you? Abby says. That's strange. Right? She laughs, but then it's swallowed by a sigh. I peer into her face. Seriously, are you okay? You should probably be asking Nick that. Well, I'm not. I'm asking you. She gives me a curious look, all eyebrows. I can't entirely decipher it. I feel my cheeks and my chest and the back of my neck go warm. Well, she says finally, cupping her chin. I'm officially the worst. No, you're not. I've made everything awkward. Trust me, the boys make themselves awkward. She laughs. It's not just the boys, though. My heart pounds when she says that. I don't even know why. But I have this urge to hoist myself onto the ledge, into the tiny space beside her. I'd sit in the sink if I had to. I want to look in the mirror and see our reflections, side by side. But I'm frozen in place. I don't like this. Me neither. She tilts her head back and sighs. Prom sucks. It sucks balls. As soon as I say it, I think of Mom and her determination to have a suck-free prom night. But I think it must have been different for her. Because maybe she was the only pregnant girl at her prom, but at least she got to kiss whomever she wanted to kiss. If I kiss Abby Suso, I burn my friendships to the ground. If she kisses me back, we bring down the apocalypse. So I just stand there and look at her until the edges of her lips tug upward which makes it even worse. 
because every time Abby smiles at me, it feels like getting stabbed. 32. As soon as we're back in the limo, Nick whips out a flask of some secret jacket pocket. I couldn't be less surprised. He swigs it and passes it to Anna, and I just sit there, stiff-shouldered, thinking, here's why I don't do school dances. I know exactly how tonight will play out. Everyone will get sloppy drunk, and then they'll talk about how drunk they are, and then they'll beg me to drink too. Because it's prom night. Because I should just try it, just a sip. Drunk people are basically zombies. Once they're infected, they want to take you down with them. Seriously, even my friends are like that. And we're supposed to be the nerds. Fuck that. Leah? Garrett nudges the flask toward me. I pass it straight to Bram, who then passes it straight to Simon, who passes it to Abby, and then Morgan. And I notice with a start that no one's actually drinking it. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just a Nick thing. As soon as the flask returns to Nick, he tilts his head back and chugs it. Then he makes a huge scene out of smiling at everyone except Abby. Simon catches my eye and raises his eyebrows, and I shake my head slightly. I love Nick to pieces, but this is cringe central. And prom hasn't even started yet. The sun's just starting to set as we pull into the Chattahoochee Nature Center. But people are already streaming across the parking lot in groups of two and three and ten. There's a whole line of limos parked at the curb, and it's just so Shady Creek. My side eye is so intense, I should be walking sideways to compensate. Of course, the first person I see is Martin Addison, in a powder blue tux, hair gelled like a helmet. He's walking next to Maddie, formerly of student council and currently known as the Nutcracker, ever since she punched David Silvera in the balls for beating her in the school election. I couldn't have picked a better day for Martin if I tried. I'm about to snark about it to Simon, but then I spot the pavilion, and my heart catches in my throat. Okay, yes, prom is stupid. But everything's lit with twinkle lights, and the hanging white curtains seem to glow against the sunset. There are giant rented speakers blasting a song I don't recognize, but it has the most perfect thudding bass, like a heartbeat. The effect is somehow otherworldly. It doesn't feel like this space could have anything to do with Creekwood High School. But Creekwood people are everywhere. On the paths, by the aviary, seated at picnic tables on the grass. There are stairs that lead straight down to the pavilion, but I veer off onto the side path instead. It's still strange, walking in a gown. It swishes around my feet with every step I take. But at least I don't trip. Thank God for combat boots. Hey, I feel a nudge. Of course it's Abby, sidling up to me so closely our arms almost touch. I feel a two-punch in my gut, flutter and yoink. I could easily grab her hand. I could lace my fingers through hers and no one would think anything of it, because straight girls hold hands all the time, especially at dances. They hold hands and take cheek-kissing selfies and sit sideways on benches with their feet in each other's laps. I could honestly just... This is really cool. Abby says, jolting me back to earth. She's peering around, wide-eyed, taking everything in. All along the path, there are screened-in enclosures. Habitats for birds of prey, mostly. She pauses in front of one. Is this an owl? Is there an owl at our prom? And yep, it's an actual owl, staring unblinking and motionless as we cut down the path. As if this wasn't already the weirdest prom ever. Insert Harry Potter reference here, I say. She grins. That's exactly what I was thinking. We end up reaching the end of the path just as Simon and Bram step off the staircase. Fancy meeting you here, Abby says. I realize with a start that they're holding hands. Like the real kind of hand holding, not the ready to spring apart at any moment kind. And they both look so sweetly self conscious about it, even though you can tell they're trying to be super casual. So, do we just walk in? Bram asks. Abby shrugs. I think so. Already there's a crowd of people milling around the dance floor, even though no one's really dancing yet. But there's an MC working the crowd, pumping his fist up and bellowing, Are there any seniors in the house? This is literally junior and senior prom, says Simon. I can't hear you! Are there any seniors in the house? Does he realize he's white? 
Abby asks. But everyone screams and howls in response, and it's completely surreal. Under the pavilion, the lights are dim and tinted orange, in a way that makes people's skin seem to glow. I catch a glimpse of white in my periphery, which turns out to be Taylor in a full-on glide. Evidently, she's decided to wear Kate Middleton's wedding dress to prom. Is she? Abby asks. Yup. Wow. We exchange grins. Taylor, don't ever change, I say. Then Garrett appears at my side. There you are. I've been looking for you, Burke. Right. My date. Wanna dance? I'm ready to dance. Right now? Yes, right now. He takes my hand. Come on, I love this song. Um, really? The DJ's playing some wordless techno song that sounds exactly like robots having sex. I mean, the lyrics are genius. I peek at his face, and all at once I realize he's nervous. I don't know if that's really clicked for me until now. But he's smiling too widely and scratching the back of his neck, and a part of me just wants to hug the poor kid. Or hand him a beer. He just needs to relax. I let him take my hand and tug me to the dance floor, right up front, near the MC. Yo, yo, yo! Are there any seniors in the house? Suddenly there's a microphone in my face. Yes, I say flatly. Say it louder for my peeps in the back. One more time! Are there any seniors in the house? Yes, we've established that there are seniors in the house, I say into the mic. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch Abby giggling. Come on, we're dancing. Garrett tugs me closer, his hands finding my waist. Are we really slow dancing to this random techno song? Yes. I shake my head and roll my eyes a little, but my hands settle onto his shoulders. And then we sway. There's barely anyone dancing. People are mostly just hovering around the dance floor. And it's hard to shake the feeling that everyone's watching me. I think self-consciousness is in my bones. But then the song changes to Nicki Minaj, which seems to flip the switch. People storm the dance floor. I disentangle from Garrett and end up pressed up between Simon and Bram. And, okay, other than the musicals, I don't think I've ever seen Simon dance. But he's pure Muppet. He's basically bobbing up and down and shuffling his feet. And as stiff as he is, Bram's even worse. I grin up at both of them, and Simon takes my hands and twirls me. I feel almost breathless. I guess all the teen movies were right. Prom is slightly, slightly magical. There's just something about being crammed onto a dance floor with all your friends, surrounded by twinkle lights and dressed up like movie stars. Simon grins down at me and bumps his hip against mine. Then he grabs Abby's hands and they spin together in circles. Bram and Garrett are attempting some kind of shoulder swerve, and I'm pretty sure Martin Addison's reeling in the nutcracker like a fish. Are there any seniors in the how wow 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 wows? Yes, we're seniors, Abby yells. Then she catches me looking and shoots me a bashful grin. The song changes again, the beat thumping softly, and everyone crowds in a little closer. Simon grabs my hand and lifts it, and suddenly I'm stretching both arms skyward, smiling with my eyes closed. And it's exactly the feeling I get when I'm drumming. I'm caught up in the music, just totally lost to it. I can't remember the last time I felt so weightless. Until it smacks me like a cannonball. All of this is ending. Holy shit. We're graduating. We have, what, five weeks of normalcy? And then the whole world resets. Intellectually, I've always known things would be different after graduation. That's just life. But I guess it's finally hitting me. The magnitude of this change. I don't think I've looked it in the eye until this moment. I miss you, I say to Simon. What? I miss you. I mean, fuck everything. I already miss them. I miss Simon and Bram and Nick and Garrett and Nora and Anna and even Morgan. It already hurts. God, I miss you too, Simon yells, smiling. And just when I think he doesn't get it at all, he flings his arms around me tightly and leans close to my ear. You know I'm going to lose my mind without you, right? Me too, I say softly, leaning into his chest. 33. But here's the weird thing. 
I've barely seen Nick all night. And normally, I wouldn't think twice about it. But this isn't regular Nick. This is sad, drunk Nick. So I have to assume he's either vomiting in the butterfly house or passed out next to the vulture enclosure. Or he's fine. He's probably fine. Even though he's not replying to any of my texts. Maybe he's fine and he just hates me. In his position, I'd hate me. Maybe Abby said something to him. Or maybe my stupid Abby crush is written plainly all over my face. I try to shake the thought from my mind, but I can't help peering around the edges of the space. For the record, finding a particular boy in a dimly lit, crowded pavilion is pretty near fucking impossible. The kid is wearing a black tuxedo and a sea of black tuxedos. For a moment, Martin Addison's wardrobe choices make a twisted kind of sense. Except then Nick whirls in out of nowhere, flushed and beaming. Hey, I start to say, but he cuts me off with a quick, tight hug and a wet, smacking kiss on the cheek. Um, are you? He pokes me in the nose. Leah Burke, you're about to have your mind blown. Okay, so now I'm slightly terrified. Nick crosses the dance floor with actual swagger. This is something I've never before witnessed in my years of friendship with Nick Eisner. He reaches the DJ table and leans forward to say something. And then the DJ nods and they bump fists. Are you watching this? Simon asks, leaning in close. You mean Nick? Simon nods. What do you think he's scheming? No idea. But as soon as I say it, I catch a glimpse of Abby, her blue skirt flaring as she spins around with Nora. Unless... Simon follows my gaze. Oh, God. Do you think he's planning some big gesture to win her back? Maybe. I don't know. I press my lips together. Or it could be a revenge thing. Like Nick taking revenge on Abby? Simon laughs incredulously. Maybe something to embarrass her. Simon shakes his head. Nick wouldn't do that. I don't know. He's acting really weird. Yeah, but this is Nick. Simon insists, though I catch a flicker of uncertainty in his eyes. He wouldn't. For a moment, we just look at each other. I think we should talk to him, I say finally. Yeah, okay, Simon nods. Let's just see what he's thinking. Simon grabs my hand and we weave through the crowd on the dance floor. Nick is in a crowd of soccer guys at the very edge of the pavilion, his arms flung around Garrett's and Bram's shoulders which is reassuring, I think. If Bram's involved, even if Garrett's involved, there's no way Nick is planning anything cruel. I mean, unless Bram and Garrett don't know about the plan. God, how do I even word this? Hey, Nick, I think you're amazing and I totally adore you, and I just wanted to quickly confirm that you're not a giant, living, breathing human phallus. Simon squeezes my hand and tugs me forward, inhaling sharply. Hey, guys! He says in his patented, I'm Simon Spear and I'm so casual I'm hardly even squeaking voice. Uh, Nick, can we talk to you for a sec? Yeah, what's up? Nick smiles expectantly. But when I look over his shoulder, I see a dozen other soccer guys, also smiling expectantly. In private, I add. Uh-oh, Eisner. A random soccer bro ruffles Nick's hair. She looks pissed. I roll my eyes, but Nick extracts himself from the guys and follows Simon and me onto the porch. I feel instantly calmer, even though the porch is attached to the pavilion and the music's still loud, and there are still people everywhere. But it's nice that the porch is totally uncovered, except for a few strings of twinkle lights. There's a railing all around it, and beyond that, a clear, tree-lined lake. I hang my arms over the railing's edge and take a deep breath. Nick, what's going on? What do you mean? He grins. You're acting weird. Why did you talk to the DJ? Asks Simon. Aha. Nick's smile widens. All will be revealed. Simon glances at me nervously. I look Nick dead on. Just tell me this. Is it Abby related? He opens his mouth to reply, but then the song switches and his whole demeanor changes. He pats us each on the shoulder before jogging back to the soccer boys as Simon and I watch. A gape. Fuck, Simon mutters, but it just sort of hangs there. Because I'm staring at the boys as they assemble themselves into a triangle formation. Nick's at the front, flanked by Bram and Garrett, with the rest of the soccer boys fanning out behind them. 
music blast from the speakers. Bum ba da bum ba da ba dum bum bum ba ba dum ba ba dum ba dum bum. Moving in unison, they sway rhythmically from side to side and then suddenly freeze. Then Nick thrusts his hips out, and the other guys follow. And then they all kick their legs out, and they're off. Holy shit! It's the choreographed prom moment, straight out of a teen movie. Suddenly, we're surrounded by people cheering and singing along to a song I've never heard before about a girl being poison. I lean toward Simon. Is this about Abby? I mean, it's a real song, Simon starts to say, but he trails off, staring at Bram. I can't even blame him. There is so much gyration happening right before our eyes. I didn't even think boys knew about hips. I definitely didn't think Bram and Nick knew about them. Are there any seniors in the house? The MC yells. Nick falls to his knees, head thrust backward for the grand finale. I turn to gape at Simon, but he's disappeared. And all of a sudden, I find myself standing next to Abby. She smiles faintly. So this is awkward, I murmur. She nods. Yep. I guess he's making a statement. Well, it's funny. She leans toward me. They've been working on the choreography for months. I actually knew they were planning this. Are you serious? With that song choice? Abby laughs flatly. Just a coincidence. They didn't know I was poisoned yet. You're not, I start to say, but my eyes drift back to the dance floor. Oh, shit. It's the theater boys, Simon, Martin, Cal, and a few others, and they're doing what appears to be a country-western line dance to the Poison song. Abby shakes her head slowly. Okay, that's definitely one of their dances from the play. Jesus Christ. And they're doing it to Poison. Yes. Yes, they are, I murmur, while Simon and Martin do si -do in their tuxes. I'm just... Yeah. I'm so confused. Abby takes my hand and leans in closer. I think we're witnessing a dance battle, she whispers, threading her fingers through mine. My heart slams in my chest. This can't actually be happening. I'm next to Abby, who's dressed like Cinderella, and we're literally just standing here holding hands, watching a dance battle like it's the most normal thing in the world. I think I've forgotten how to breathe. You okay? She asks, peering at me. I nod quickly. She keeps peering. I rack my brain for something to say. Don't mention the hands, don't mention the kiss, don't mention Nick. Nick should be dancing with them. He's a theater boy now, I say. Awesome. My brain actually hates me. But Abby just grins. Well, his character's dead in this song. Kind of. Oh, so it's a fuck you, Nick song. Basically, yeah. But Nick's laughing so hard, he can't even stand up straight. He's literally leaning into Bram's shoulder, head buried in the folds of his jacket. Meanwhile, the theater guys have assembled into their final pose, complete with jazz hands. Someone starts a slow clap, and Abby untangles our hands to join in. I feel a tiny punch of disappointment. My hand feels so useless now. That was amazing, Abby says as soon as Simon wanders back to us. Ten out of ten, would recommend. Simon beams. Obviously, I had to defend your honor. Because I'm the poison girl. No way, he says. I mean, kind of, but you're not. Abby raises her eyebrows. Do you want to dance? Simon blurts. There's a slow song playing. I think it's Ed Sheeran. Simon tugs my hair and then takes Abby's hand. She smiles at me over her shoulder as he leads her to the dance floor. For a minute, I stand there, watching them. Simon's actually a decent slow dancer. Somehow, he knows to hold Abby's hand up, like grandparents do. I bet he practiced with his mom. It's funny how ten seconds ago, he was tiny Simon Spear in a wolf shirt. And suddenly, out of nowhere, he's this dapper guy in a tux. How did we get so old? Why, hello, Burke. I look up and it's Garrett, hands clasped behind his back. Hey. I tear my eyes away from Abby and Simon. So, who knew you were this amazing dancer? He smiles, just a little. You thought I was amazing? I mean, you weren't terrible. Oh my god, you loved it. What did you love most? Was it this move? He thrusts his pelvis three times in rapid succession. 
Definitely that one. Or was it this one? He shoots his hands up like he's holding onto monkey bars. Then he swivels his hips in circles. Yes, all of the above. Damn, he grins. So that's what it takes to impress you, huh? I shrug and smile vaguely. God, I'm such a shitty person. I should shut this down. Right now. I'm just going to spit it out really nicely so we're all on the same page and no one gets their hopes up. I shut my eyes and take a deep breath. And then we both speak at once. It comes out in a jumble. You go first, I say quickly. Okay. Garrett inhales. Do you want to dance? And... Fuck. I just stand there. Sure, I say finally. I mean, he's my date. We should dance. It's not even a question. We walk hand in hand to the dance floor, and then Garrett pauses, facing me. So, should we just... His hands fall to my waist, and I wrap mine around his shoulders. And we sway. He tugs me closer, so close that our chests are mashed together, which is actually pretty unnerving. I think I'm radiating awkwardness, like it's some sort of gaseous substance rolling off me in waves. And the thing that freaks me out most is that Garrett hasn't said a word. He's just looking at me with this sweetly dopey expression, and I feel like the biggest asshole on earth. I am very much not in love with Garrett Laughlin, and he probably deserves to know that. But when I open my mouth, all that comes out is, what happens when they're 70? What? In the song, he says he'll love this girl until they're 70. But then what? He's just like, peace, I'm out. Wow, Garrett says, laughing. You are the actual least romantic person on earth. Not true, I think. Case in point, at this very moment, it's taking every ounce of self-control not to stare wistfully at Abby. Instead, I peer over Garrett's shoulder and gasp. Are you kidding me? Garrett furrows his brow. Turn around sideways. Because, holy shit, it's Nick. Dancing with Taylor Metternich. But not just dancing. Their hands are everywhere. Nick's fingers trail down the back of Taylor's Kate Middleton wedding bodice, way too close to her ass. And there isn't an inch of space between them anywhere. Except their mouths. There's just about an inch there. My eyes fall immediately to Abby, who's six feet away, watching this shit show unfold. I mean, of course she's watching. Simon is too. They're both frozen in place, eyebrows raised to the moon. He just kissed her. They're kissing, Garrett murmurs. Damn. Holy mother of God. What's even happening right now? Nick is kissing a girl on the dance floor right in front of Abby, and the girl is Taylor Metternich. And yes, if they have babies one day, those babies will have awesome singing voices. But in the meantime, what? I glance back at Abby, and this time she's looking straight at me, her expression unreadable. I catch her gaze, and she shoots me this sad, half-smile. God, she's so... I don't even know what. I shouldn't stare and I definitely shouldn't gaze longingly. Like, holy shit, Leah. Cool your jets. This is not a fucking teen movie. I turn away quickly, tuning back into the softcore porn channel that is Taylor and Nick. And wow, that is some sloppy kissing. Are all the chaperones high right now? Are they dead? Because I'm pretty sure I'm about to watch Nick get Taylor pregnant, right here on the dance floor. Right in front of Nick's ex-girlfriend. Except, when my eyes flick back just a minute or two later, Simon's standing beneath the edge of the pavilion alone. And Abby's gone. 34. I head straight for Simon as soon as the song ends. By then, he's found a table with Bram, and they've both draped their tux jackets over their chairs. Did Abby leave? I ask, settling in beside Bram. Simon nods, leaning forward. Yeah right in the middle of the dance. She said she wanted to be alone. Really? Okay, that's weird, right? I mean, it's weird for Abby. Is she upset? I don't know. Simon looks slightly distraught. I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't blame her. God, I close my eyes. Yeah. Bram bites his lip and nods. I should have gone with her, Simon says, 
rubbing his forehead. Ugh. Now she probably thinks she's kicked out of our squad. Like we're going to replace her with Taylor. Okay, there's no way she thinks that, Bram says. Maybe I'll text her, I say, and I promptly start blushing. Way to be mega obvious, Leah. I might as well whip out my heart and set it on the table for the boys to examine. But Simon just nods eagerly. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it is. It's a great idea, and I should totally text her. Nothing weird about that. I'm a friend. I'm checking in. Hey, are you okay? I stare at my phone for a moment, but there's nothing. No dots. She's not typing. Nick's an asshole, I add. Did she write back? Simon asks. I shake my head slowly. God, I don't know why this is making me so antsy. She's probably not even looking at her phone. Or maybe she just wants some space for once. I should leave her alone. And I shouldn't even care. Really, I shouldn't. But, okay, I guess it kind of bothers me. Just the thought of her off crying somewhere over Nick. Like, I get it. Believe me. I know exactly how it feels to be out of your mind in love with someone. And I know exactly how it feels to watch them kiss someone else. My heart flips in my chest. There's this awful part of me that thinks she deserves this. Just a little taste of what last year was like for me. But another part of me wants to punch Nick in the face. And then, as if I've conjured him myself, Nick appears at our table. He's alone. Taylor seems to have disappeared. But he's not looking for Taylor. Abby's gone. He slides into the seat next to Simon. His lips are puffy and his eyes are like glass. Shit. I fucked up. I shouldn't have made out with Taylor right in front of her. I raise my eyebrows. Am I the biggest asshole? He buries his head in his hands and groans. She probably hates me. Fuck. I have to find her. I don't think you should do that. Do you know which way she went? Nick stares past my shoulder into the distance. Simon frowns. I'm not sure. It looked like she turned left. Toward the aviary? Other left, says Simon. Okay. He nods resolutely. I'm going to just... He starts to stand. Nope. That's a really bad idea. I tug him back by the sleeve. I have to make sure she's okay. I guarantee she doesn't want to talk to you right now. Nick presses his hands down on the table. Well, someone needs to go check on her. Fine, I say quickly. The boys all turn to face me, and I feel my face burning. I'll go check on her, okay? Then I push out my chair. There are trails veering away from the pavilion in every direction, and for a moment, I stand, frozen. I have no clue where to begin. Simon said she went left, but left could mean the picnic tables or back through the trees, or she could have circled back behind the aviary. I have to put myself in her brain. If I just watched my ex-boyfriend kiss Taylor Mutternich, which path would I take? Probably the one leading straight to the bathroom so I could spend the rest of my life vomiting. But okay, I need to not overthink this. I pick the path through the trees, and it's like stepping into a fairy tale. Girl in a gown walks into a forest. It's strange how secluded this feels, even with the pavilion directly behind me. The trees are so thick, they're practically a curtain and the music sounds like it's beaming in from another galaxy. A twig cracks beneath my shoe, and I shriek like it's a bone. Then, out of nowhere, Who's there? I freeze. Abby's voice, slightly nervous. Hello? How nice. My body's decided to mutiny. My feet are like barbells, my voice is non-existent, and my lungs are totally checked out. But my heart's beating like a hummingbird. I just stand there, staring into the foliage. Okay, I know someone's there. Abby? I manage. Oh, thank God. Why can't I see you? I'm peering all around. I'm behind you. I whirl around, and now I don't know how I missed it. A wooden observation deck, up a short ramp, overlooking the lake. There's a bench in the middle, and Abby's sitting on it sideways with her legs tucked up. She waves when she catches my eye. I head up the ramp to meet her. Way to scare the crap out of me, she says, scooting down the bench to make room. But I walk straight to the railing and lean against that instead, my back to the lake. I peer down at her face. What are you doing here? I don't know. 
You don't know? I picture her on the ledge in the American Girl store bathroom. I can't believe that was tonight. It feels like centuries have passed. You keep running away. You keep finding me. For a moment, I'm speechless. Did you get my text? I ask finally. You texted me? I was worried. She pulls her phone out of her clutch and taps into her messages. Then she glances back up at me. I mean, yeah, Nick's an asshole. She pauses. But Nick isn't the problem. My heart flips. What's the problem? I swear to God, Leah. She shakes her head, smiling faintly. And you think I'm the dense one. What's that supposed to mean? She just stares at me with an expression I can't begin to decipher. Then she looks away, tapping back into her phone. I feel weird watching her type, so I turn to face the lake, resting my arms on the railing. It's a quiet spot, with trees overhanging so thickly, you can only see a tiny pool of inky black water. But the effect makes it look like a wild, untamed lagoon. Distantly in the pavilion, the song changes tempo. Something different, but familiar. I shut my eyes and try to place it. Check your tumbler, Abby says suddenly. My eyes flutter open. What? Just check it. Then she tucks her face into the crook of her elbow. I tap into my phone, staring into the brightness of my screen. My app is still logged into my art page, and I can see right away that I have a new ask. I don't know how Abby knew that. Unless... I tap into the message, feeling like the ground just tilted. I have to read it three times before the words sink in. Commission request. Two girls kissing on prom night. The whole world seems to freeze and my lungs empty like a balloon. Two girls kissing. On prom night. I look at Abby, but her face is still buried. Is this? My voice shakes. Are you joking? She lifts her head to peek up at me. Why would you even think that? Because. I don't know. Leah, I'm just... I've been losing my mind. Her whole body is tense and still, skirt trailing to the floor of the platform and I swear I've stopped breathing. Abby Suso wants to kiss me. At prom. Right now. My whole body feels electric. Chest and stomach and everywhere below. It feels like having to pee, except it's not actually pee. It's lightning. She laughs nervously. Please say something. My hands fall to my sides. I mean, obviously. I swallow. Obviously, I like you. Her face falls. But it's just the timing, I say. I know. Like, you don't even. I shut my eyes. I just, I really like you. Me too. God, I think I'm. Me too. We just stare at each other. My heart is pounding out of my chest. I mean, the good news is that we'll be at the same school. I say finally. We'll be roommates. She sniffs and then smiles. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. I don't care. She stands, suddenly, brushing her skirt down. Then she walks over to the railing beside me, hanging her arms over the side. I tilt my head toward her. I just think we should let some time pass. She sucks in a breath. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, you're right. You're very practical, Leah. I know. I swallow. This will be good, though. Nick will have moved on. Wait, are you talking about Taylor Mutternich's face barnacle? Abby asks. Because I'm pretty sure that Nick has moved on. I smile sadly. See, I don't think he has. Not even close. I turn to look at her, but she's staring out at the lake. I keep talking. It's just that everything's a mess, you know? With prom and graduation. And you're right, we don't want drama. Nick would be so... I know, Abby says quickly. Yeah, Nick would lose it. He's already losing it. And Garrett, too, probably. God, Garrett. Yeah, it just sucks, she sighs. I mean, I get it. I totally get it. And I shouldn't have even... It's not. She covers her face. I don't know. I'm an idiot. No, you're not. She laughs flatly. Yeah, but I am. This is so... 
Just, I mean, I screwed this up a long time ago. We could have been, but she cuts herself off. For a moment, we're silent. I feel my eyes start to prickle. We could have been what? I ask finally. We could have been like Simon and Bram, she says, her voice quivering faintly. I was so, like, this whole time, this could have been us, you know? Being the cutest girlfriends and kissing and grossing everyone out with how in love we are. And there it is, that runaway tear. I wipe it away quickly, but it regenerates. I hate crying. I hate it more than anything in the world. Abby sniffs. We need a time turner. I laugh and it sounds like a hiccup. God, are you like the biggest Potterhead ever now? Not really, she says, smiling cheerfully. Then she sighs. I'm literally just trying to impress a girl. Oh, my heart thumps. So, yeah, this sucks. Yeah, and obviously I don't want to hurt anyone. Me neither. I mean, we just can't. We can't do this to Nick. I know, her voice cracks. I know. It actually hurts to look at her. Abby, I'm so... Just don't, okay? It's fine. We're fine. And even though her eyes are wet, her smile lights up her face. This is totally my fault, and I get that. And just... She turns around, leaning her back against the railing. I don't know, Leah. Maybe you should get back to your date. Abby, it's fine. We're good. I just need a minute. She presses the corners of her eyes. I'll be right behind you, I promise. I nod quickly. And holy fuck. I am dangerously close to sobbing. I can't even form words. I just cut down the ramp and flee back down the path without a backward glance. Of course, I'm back at the pavilion approximately ten seconds later, but I'm nowhere near ready. I can barely breathe, much less speak. It's weird, but all I want to do is lie on the ground, sleep in the dirt. I don't even care about the dress. It just sucks, and it sucks harder because it was so painfully close to being wonderful. Imagine if the kiss in Athens wasn't an awkward mistake. If I were a little less stubborn. If Abby were a little less clueless. What if she'd never dated Nick at all? What if we were out and happy and as famously in love as every other obnoxious Creekwood couple? Maybe Abby would have talked me into trying out for the play. Maybe I'd have spent a little less time watching the action from the back of the auditorium. Maybe I'd have spent more time making out in the back of the auditorium. Instead, I'm standing here watching prom happen from 20 feet away. My eyes land on Simon and Bram at the edge of the pavilion and their jacketless tuxedos, leaning against the railing. They're not dancing, just standing, and I can only see their backs. Simon's arm is hooked around Bram's waist, their bodies so close they practically blur together, and Bram's hand sweeps smoothly over the nape of Simon's neck. Sometimes watching them makes my throat hurt. The song changes again, and I instantly recognize the opening bars. Stevie Wonder, Mom Song. Awesome, because what I really need right now is to feel Mom peering over my shoulder. Except, I don't know, it kind of feels like a sign, like a whispered secret message. Don't overthink this. Stop obsessing, don't overanalyze, and don't cry. But it's hopeless. My hands fly to my face, but these are full body sobs. I can barely catch my breath. Because here are Simon and Bram, with their arms around each other, and they're so fucking brave in ways I'll never understand. And now we're about to graduate, and all I have to show for it is the saddest crush of the century. And, God, it would be so sensible to wait until college, to let Nick bounce back to normal, to let Garrett down gently. Let the dust settle. Let our friends know. Dip our toes in first and let everything evolve slowly. We could ease into dating in a couple of months, if we wanted. But I don't want to wait for months. And I don't feel like being sensible. Don't overthink this. Suddenly, I'm running, almost tripping over my dress, hair falling in my face. And it's reckless and stupid and probably pointless, too, because I doubt she's even where I left her. I bet she disappeared entirely. I bet she... 
Leah? Abby says. And then I barrel straight into her. Oof. Wow. She grabs my shoulders to study me. Are you? She stops short. Leah, you're crying. No, I'm not. So you're going to stand here gushing tears, telling me you're not crying? Yes, I say. Then I take a deep breath. No? Okay? Because I'm not going to just stand here. The whole world stops, and I can hardly hear the music. All I hear is my heartbeat. I cut my hands around her cheeks. I'm going to do this, I say softly. And then I kiss her. Really fast. And now she's gaping at me, her eyes huge and startled. My hands fall. Oh, God, you are... No, she cuts me off. Don't you dare freak out. I'm not. Good. She smiles and then takes a deep breath. Let's try this again. When I nod, she pulls me closer, threading her fingers through my hair. My heart thumps wildly. My hair's a mess. Yep. And it's about to get worse. Her thumb grazes my ear. So much worse. And suddenly, her lips are on mine, and my hands are on her waist, and I'm kissing her back so fiercely, I forget how to breathe. I feel like a campfire, like I could burn for days. Because the thing about Abby is that she kisses like she dances. Like she's totally there. Like she's handing you her heart. She pulls back, resting her forehead on mine. So, this is happening, she says. I think so. She exhales. Wow. Is that a happy wow or a holy shit wow? It's both. It's holy shit, I'm so happy. Then she kisses me again and my eyes flutter shut. I feel everything at once, her thumb tracing my cheekbones, the quiet pressure of her lips. My knees are jelly. I don't even know how I'm standing. I slide my hands up over her shoulder blades and pull her even closer. I am just... Holy fuck. I am kissing the girl. You're giggling, she says, lips still flush with mine. No way. I don't giggle. I feel her smile. That's such a lie. Maybe I only giggle around you. Oh, really? She grins and draws back, hands falling to my shoulders. God, Leah. Just look at you. Hot mess. Beautiful, she says. I hope you know that. The way she's looking at me makes me lose my breath. I press my fingertips to my mouth. I swear, my lips have a pulse. What are you thinking about? She asks. You? I don't even pause. God, I'm never this unfiltered, but I feel giddy and wild and 20 times braver than usual. I kiss her again softly. It's like you give off light. She shakes her head, smiling. You are out of your mind. I seriously am. I feel breathless, almost loopy. I press my hand to my cheek. And then suddenly, my eyes are drawn to Garrett's corsage on my wrist. Oh, hell no, Abby says, following my gaze. Don't you start questioning things. She takes both my hands, clasping them between us. I'm not, I say quickly, but I feel my stomach lurching. I just kissed a person who isn't my prom date. I just, holy shit, I kissed Nick's ex-girlfriend. Leah, Abby says warningly. Okay, but nope, just kiss me right now. Just right now, on command? Leah she says again, rolling her eyes. Then she kisses me so hard that I practically unravel. Time stops, and something in me unlocks. Okay, she says finally, her voice cracking slightly. Stop thinking about Nick, stop thinking about Garrett, and definitely stop thinking about if it's a cliché to kiss on prom night. I sniff. It is a cliché. Whatever. Clichés rule. I just look at her. I can't believe I'm allowed to do this. I can just stare at her face without it being creepy. I want to memorize every single inch of this Abby. The shine of her cheekbones and the brightness of her eyes. There are tears in her lashes, and her lips are sort of puffy. I don't know how this girl can go from laughing to crying to kissing and back and still come out of it looking like an actual moonbeam. I am done for. Totally, utterly, irreversibly done for. So. I think I'm going to like having a drummer girlfriend, she says. Girlfriend. 
My heart flips. She looks suddenly nervous. Or not? Just give me, like, a second to process this. I squeeze her hands. Girlfriend, huh? And roommate? I laugh. That's literally the worst idea ever. Like I care. She smiles. You are trouble, Suso. You have no idea. I can't even form words, so I shut up and kiss her. I swear to God, I can make a career out of this. Professional kisser of Abby Suso. She tugs me closer, hands falling to my waist, and I still can't believe it. I'm wearing a prom dress on a dirt trail on a starlit April night, kissing the nerdiest fucking cheerleader in the whole entire world. This can't actually be real. But then I hear it. The crunch of twigs beneath shoes and the quietest gasp. Abby stiffens and we quickly disentangle. Someone standing right behind me, watching. I slowly turn around, my stomach clenched with dread. I mean, what the fuck kind of day is this? What does the universe even have to say for itself? I forgot to buy a bra, our car broke down, our restaurant was bright pink, Martin Addison showed up in a powder blue tux, so now that's forever burned into my brain. Everything's a mess. Abby and I are the biggest hot mess of all. I don't even know what we were thinking, kissing so close to the pavilion. Literally any Creekwood asshole could have stumbled up the trail and found us. Anyone. Except, maybe the universe doesn't hate me after all. Because when I look up, there are only two people staring at Abby and me, with their mouths hanging open. Simon's hand flies to his face. Wait, he says faintly. He opens his mouth like he's going to say more, but then he just snaps it shut. Bram doesn't say a word. Abby laughs nervously. Surprise! Simon glances back and forth between us like he's waiting for the punchline. Well? Deep breath. I guess you thought I was straight. He tilts his head to one side, but I don't wait for him to respond. So, yeah, I'm not. Like, really not. I am really, really bi. So am I. Abby chimes in. Holy crap. I'm just... Simon blinks. Really? Really. Wow. Oh my god, I have so many questions right now. He shakes his head slowly. Does Nick know? Nick will be fine. Bram smiles. I am so happy for you guys. Oh, God, me too. Simon smacks himself on the forehead. But you knew that, right? Holy shit. Yeah. Nick is going to. I mean, whatever, right? I'm so fucking thrilled. Okay. Okay, he keeps saying, like a tiny broken robot. Okay. Wow. How long have you been... by? No, I mean... He gestures vaguely between Abby and me. How long has this been a thing? Fifteen minutes, I say. Abby grins. Give or take two weeks. Or a year and a half. Just... Holy shit, says Simon. Abby takes my hand and threads our fingers together. Like, you have no idea how happy this makes me. No idea. I just wanted you guys to be friends, even, but this... Simon stares at our hands, his eyes like saucers. That's right, Abby says. We went above and beyond for you, Simon. So you're welcome, I add. I'm shook, Simon says, and Bram pats him on the arm. So now I'm walking down a tree-lined path, holding hands with Abby Suso. Holding hands with my girlfriend. My girlfriend, who is Abby Suso. My brain is totally obsessed with this fact. Like, I'm pretty sure my academic career is over, and God help me on the AP exams. Because how are you supposed to think about calculus when Abby Suso is your girlfriend? Now we're practically at the pavilion, and my heart's in my throat. Because inside the pavilion is my prom date, and my possibly racist friend, and Abby's ex-boyfriend, and the girl he's making out with, and probably a slew of casual homophobes. This is not my perfect prom night, and it's not the happy ending I pictured. It's not an ending at all. But it's mine. This whole moment is mine. This electric bright pavilion with music so loud I can feel it. It's mine. And maybe everything's a mess. Maybe everything's changing. I'm sure my face is a swollen splotch fest. 
and my boots are muddy, and my hair is completely undone. I don't even know if my voice works, but I keep following Simon and Bran back down the trail. I keep holding Abby's hand. Until we're close enough to the pavilion that I can practically smell it. Corsages and sweat. This night. My prom. And even though I'm looking in from the outside, I get closer with every step. Thirty-five. From Leah on the offbeat at gmail dot com, to Simon Irvin Spear at gmail dot com. Date September twenty one at one thirty four a.m. Subject: Re. You were born. Okay, I can't even tell you how much I love the fact that you sent me an actual birthday email, and Garamond. That's like peak Simon. If you ever change, I swear to God, I'll kill you. But the birthday was good. Abby's such a fucking nerd. She made me breakfast in bed, and by breakfast I mean cookies, and by made I mean wore a cargo jacket with cookie-sized pockets to the dining hall. And make no mistake, we live five minutes from a cookie delivery bakery. Let that sink in. Cookie delivery bakery. But of course, some sacrifices are necessary. Especially when a person and her girlfriend are saving every dollar for the April New York trip that is definitely happening. So tell your boy to clear out some Leah and Abby-sized floor space in his dorm room, like Bram would ever have clutter on his floor. God, what am I even saying? So I'm ignoring your first question because I know you don't actually want to know about intro to sociology. It fucking rules, though. Just FYI. I'm not ignoring your second question, but I've been sitting here staring at Abby's laptop screen for ten minutes, trying to find the exact words to explain what it's like, and apparently those words don't exist. So, yeah, it's good, like really, really good. She's just Abby, you know. Like today, it was one of those perfect sunny days, so we just spread a blanket out on the North Campus quad, and she was reading, and I was drawing. And she kept pushing her sock against mine like our feet were kissing. And now I'm blushing. Are you happy? Because I am happy. Honestly, it's kind of weird. And yes, I did talk to Nick, but he did not mention the Taylor development. Are you serious? God, I think he's gonna wake up one day and discover he's married to her. She'll make it happen. But good for her, I guess. I mean, good for. Them? Not going to lie, I'm a little freaked out that I'm dating someone who was dating someone who was dating Taylor Metternich. Yikes. Okay, but Garrett and Morgan? What? Bram needs to get us all the details. Hi, Bram. Are you still heading up to New York this weekend? You better text me lots of pictures. I love you a lot, Simon Spear. You know that, right? Love, Leah. Your platonic soulmate forever and ever and ever, and I don't care if I'm being corny right now because corny is the new me. I'm turning into my mom. Yeah, I said it. I love you.